Hello, everybody, and welcome back to L.A. Noir. So I just, uh, won the, uh, fisticuffs battle against this man here, and then I hit pause real fast. <laughs> Gave him the good old headbutt. They call that the, what is it? The Boston Kiss. Yeah. A headbutt. A headbutt to the face. They call it a Boston What's Kiss. What's your name? Herbert Chapman. So you like fires. Some watching them or setting them. I don't want any trouble. Oh, you found Turn some. Your pockets. You got a brochure for a vacation getaway? You're not anymore. Oh, you? bro, you are I keep myself to myself. in trouble, my friend. Okay, so if you guys don't know what the hell the point of this is, I actually do. So you light the cigarette, you take a few puffs on it to get the cherry going. You put it inside of a full matchbook and you close the matchbook, right? So when the cherry is burning down, right, eventually it reaches the matchbook and it will set the matchbook alight, right? So it basically gives you, like, two minutes to uh, get away. So it's like you light the cigarette and then you, you know, fill the room with gas or something like that. And then put the matchbook in a spot where, you know, it's going to eventually touch the gas uh, if it is lit. And then the cigarette, like I said, burns down and gives you a couple of minutes to get away. I know exactly what this is. You're fucked, my man. Cigarette in a matchbox gives you a five or yep. six minute delay. Yep. You want more time, you use a mosquito coil. Don't you, Herbert? A mosquito coil? You light this fire, Herbert. Hell no. I heard it over the fire radio. Sounded sweet. Oh yeah, uh, real sweet. The whole family that's the dead. Fire station. I have a theory about this. Will do, Lynch. Take this guy in. We might want him for questioning later. You got it, And yeah, name in the balls for me while you're at it. Why have you got such a hard on for this case? If it is murder, it's almost impossible to prove. Fire doesn't leave much evidence. There's no percentage in this. I think it's more than one case. The house fire is cold. Accidents, heater fires, gas explosions. There's got to be a reason. The reason is you want to be a star again. Forget it. Give it up. You'll feel better. There's something to this. I know it. What are you talking about? Arson is insurance. It's always been insurance. We still investigate the cases, Biggs. The people in this house are dead. Go soak your head, Phelps. This hero business is a full-time obsession with you. Come get up, on. I'm going to make this case. Come on. I'm going to rub the department's nose in it. Help Come me up. or stay out of my way. You got it? Yeah. Come get up on the couch. Alright, so we got uh, Gulliver's Travel Agency, that's the agency that was uh, giving away uh, free vacations and whatnot, and it's kind of odd because apparently both of these people uh, had free weekend getaways and their houses exploded, so it's a little bit odd. And then we have the Suburban, suburban Redevelopment. Let's go to Gulliver's first. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! What are you doing? I look, man. The sun was it reflected off of the light from the swamp gas on Venus, and man, things just happen sometimes, Herschel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were holding some speed there. Let me turn, let me turn. Uh, excuse me, sir. <laughs> oh, look at that minty, funky looking truck back there, you guys. What the hell? Uh, huh. <laughs> that was like a Gran Turismo license test where you have to swerve a void and then stop inside the box. <laughs> we are in the rich part of town, baby. Look at these houses. Alright, here we are. Gulliver's Travel Agency, you guys. Best deals, discount prices. 
I thought those were real people for a second. I was like, what the fuck are they doing? <laughs> Like they're a little too happy for me, my man. Detectives Phelps and Biggs, LAPD. John Cunningham, can I help you, gentlemen? We have reason to believe that the Sawyer family of 4414 Rosewood Avenue recently won a competition run by your company. Yes, I remember them. They called it to cancel at the last minute. One of the kids was sick. Very unfortunate. You mind if I take a look at that? Now that's true. That's corroborated by the neighbor. Well, uh, so far, he is, uh, uh, what's called, um, uh, he's telling me the truth. Yeah, family of four, this is it, Sawyer, right here. The Sawyer family, Rosewood Avenue. And what was the other one? It was the Steffens family, family of five flying by a boat. Here they are, Steffens. What do you think, large man? I can see why cops never take holidays. They stand around all day with their minds on vacation. Motherfucker, I don't get paid by the hour, my man. I get salary. I can sit at your desk until you gotta go home at the end of the day. Do you understand the way this works now? Tell us about the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. There's not much to tell. They run a promotion. Our promotions mailing list covers half of L.A. That's a straightforward look if I ever seen one. Let's just see if he does any fidgeting. Let him stew on that answer for a little bit. I mean, he was telling me the truth when we came in. He immediately corroborated what the neighbor said, so I'm actually going to believe him here. So they are not a government agency? <laughs> I don't believe so. Seems like a government nice guy. Organizations don't usually get involved in promotions. Yes, we got it right. The promotional travel contest, you guys. Let's see if he's sweating yet. You sweating yet? Need a glass of water? I'm told the tickets were a prize. Yes, they were. You do a lot of these prizes. Look, there are hundreds of these promotions running at any one time. If you're the lucky guy, you get your name pulled out of a hat. Pulled out of a hat, huh? You look a little... Doubtful. While the Sawyer family were supposed to be at Catalina Island, their house burnt down. You consider them lucky? Yeah, and so did the Steffens house. What are the odds of that? Christ. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, people are dead, my Can man. Can you tell me who offered the prize won by the Sawyer family? Sure. The Suburban well, Redevelopment Fund. There's supposed to be some sort of supervised draw with hundreds of tickets. But the reality is the Suburban Redevelopment Fund I know calls it. me every couple of weeks and tells me exactly who is winning. Oh, they pick the winners automatically. Thanks for your help. Uh, no problem. Wish I could do something for that family. Dude, they pick... Put round the hat. A few bucks would really help me now. I suppose so. Good. I'll put you down for 50. Uh, I could tell you were Samaritan the minute I walked in the 50? door. 50? <laughs> Good man, Cunningham. You're all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm great. Poorer, but great. 50 bucks back in the day. Man, that's like 500, you know what I mean? Damn. Just add a zero to basically any price that people say in this game, you just add a zero. Man, I am getting into my car, dude. Like, what is your problem? Oh, it's my favorite song in this game, you guys. Oh, and it just ended. Let me guess. You want to check out the Suburban address? You bet. Partners must think alike. Come on, Chico. What the hell was that? on either side. Oh, no. oh! <laughs> Just gave him a little smoochy. 
<laughs> Yo, can we actually get food? Hold on, I guess. I've never actually checked this out in this game. Like, you can... What the actual fuck are you doing? Are you fucking stupid? Get the fuck out, dude. I'm sorry, sir. Police officer. Four I need your the car. City. All yeah, these yeah. Your car now belongs to the streets. Bounce. Come to see if I can get some I ice cream from this man. Because in GTA and stuff like that, you can walk up to these places and get food. Shake a leg, Herschel. And press. Uh. You do your job, I'll do mine. Shut up. I'm trying to talk to this man. I can't talk to that guy. I guess we can't. Oh well. <laughs> that guy's... What the hell? His car vanished? What is happening? <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to see if we could actually get food at those little snack trucks, because you can in, uh... Many, many, no, 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 no. You can in uh, many other uh, Rockstar games, you can walk up and grab a bite to eat. Always loved uh, San Andreas, the uh, food system in San Andreas. Where it's like if you eat a hell of a lot, your character will become fat. But then you go to the, to the gym in the game and work out. And then you turn turn it all into muscle, and you can like become like literally Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Freaking love that, yeah. Then you just go grab some pizza and stuff like that. It, San Andreas was so revolutionary. You don't look like a this happy is to be happy fellow. Offices of the Suburban Redevelopment Fund. This is an Elysian housing development, Mac. So Elysian is an investor in the redevelopment fund. Looks that way. Are we done here, Mac? I've got work to do. Sure, buddy. Thanks for your help. Mac, Mac, Mac. Mac. Investors in the suburban redevelopment. So what? If you think I'm putting my pension on the line and harassing Leland Monroe without evidence, you're out of your mind. Lynch says we should visit him at Fire Station 32. Yeah. Who exactly is this guy, Lynch? Lynch is a legend. You should feel privileged. He doesn't let many people into the inner sanctum. Keep your mouth shut when you learn something about fires. So we're going to the uh, fire station. Man, when I was a kid, fire trucks were like the fucking coolest thing, man. We came as soon as we could. I swear. This town like, look at that shit, yo. That's so sick. Walked out on his wife. That's where they hook it up to the hydrant, you guys, right there. Lynch. So Lynch. sick. You two investigating the house fire on Kenmore Avenue as well? Yep. Why? I had to look around the place while I was out there. Do you believe the fire? I deal in facts, Phelps. Evidence of an explosion. No obvious sign of accelerants. Wiring looks intact. Come and take a look at this. Is this the heater from the Sawyer fire out? Yes, it is. Oh, this is the oh. other one. Looks like it was recently serviced. And by the same person three times again. Not the I same as the other person that, that did the other one. one. I don't have enough evidence to prove. Well, if you say it so, we're listening. Okay, Phelps. You're a bright penny. 
You have a gas supply. You have a Bunsen burner as a pilot light. You have a regulator valve, and the balloon represents the gas expanding in the room. Oh, I get it. Now, the gas has to make contact it. with the mosquito coil to form an explosion. Yep, 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 yep. Let's see if you can work out the chain of events. I, I get it. So, essentially, his setup was that it was connected to the, like, gas, right? So he had uh, a balloon. Now, the balloon, if you put that to the pipe, it would fill up with gas. So you put that next to the mosquito coil, which is slowly burning. And the moment that the balloon fills up all the way, it would touch the burning mosquito coil and kaboom. So I know that the this is the balloon, right? Yeah. The gas bubble needs to be next to the coil if it's going to ignite. Yeah. And then this is the uh, regulation. That's the regulator. And this... No, 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 damn it. Would you fuck up? That's the regulator, and then this is our uh, uh, regulator uh, valve. Put it into position, Cole. That would work. Good, your regulator's in position. Yeah. Okay, I'll let your pilot turn the gas. Pull the lever on the left to turn on the gas. Oh. Yeah. And you light it, fills up the balloon. Bam. So that's how it's being done. Maybe. There could be a fault with these valves. I've adjusted this one for our experiment, but you need to take it to Instaheat and see what they say. Their headquarters is on North Harvard Boulevard, number 262. Thanks, Albert. You're welcome, Biggs. See you at the next show. All right. I swear, this town is going straight to hell. Show? The next fight. You should go to the factory and see how many of these things are going bang in the night. You know this Chapman character? The guy's a freak. Loves fighters. He's the kind of guy that would like for a lot of things. We don't really have any credible evidence to pursue him. Yeah, I think that guy that we caught that likes fires, I, I, I don't think that, um, to be fair, I don't even think that he has anything to do with this at all. I think he, I think he was actually being genuine when he said uh, that he simply just showed up because he heard about it over the radio, and he just showed up for that purpose. It's floppy, right? Him doing this is floppy. Because I have evidence to corroborate that something else is going on here. That there's something a little bit more um, serious going on. Both of these people won a competition for a vacation. And the moment that both of them left to go on that vacation, their fucking houses exploded. That's a little strange. Uh, you don't even have to be a detective to see that that's kind of odd. Insta-heat, you guys. Here we are. Damn, look at that ride right there on the left. Damn, look at that. Look at the hips on it. That thing is a monster. If you're wondering what those things are on the windshield, they're actually the mirrors. You would uh, fold them out to the side of the car. I mean, mirrors still fold today, but <laughs> not like that. <laughs> Oh, here we are. New and improved model. A 
be selling these like hotcakes. New and improved, huh? LAPD detectives, ma'am. We need to speak to someone in charge. I see. Well, duty manager for today is oh Mr. Racing. Oh, my goodness. You should find him in his office. Absolutely gorgeous. What time do you get off? My God. I'm out of here. Is this going to be the guy here? Yeah. Detective Phelps and Biggs, arson. We're investigating a couple of house fires. What can you tell us about this? Pressure regulator from a Model 70 here. Let me take a look. Yeah, he's right. That's what it is. We have a problem. This has been tampered with. Hmm. What? You see this diaphragm? It forms a seal across the saddle here. Gas flows across from here to here. The diaphragm regulates flow. It's been reversed. It's a subtle change. But it means the gas never closes off properly. Hmm. So we got Ivan Rasik, the Insta Heat factory manager. What's up? Hmm. You look like a sly guy, my man. Uh, we could do this some other time if you're not feeling well. No, we'll do it right now. So you're telling me that this is not a manufacturing fault or service repair. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with the design. Buddy, I've got four dead people, two children included in that list, and two houses that have blown up and burned to the ground in the last 24 hours. You're telling me that you've never had any problems with this heater? Look, you've changed the design since the Model 70. These things are still being installed? It's the demand. What the hell? None of us could keep up with the amount of housing going up. At the budget end, we're still using some of the old stock. You need to we stop that. We are installing 100 years a week. They're not all faulty. They're not all safe either. If they're installing 100 a week, what the hell, yo? This whole city is about to go up in smoke. Are these diaphragms prone to failure? They uh, tend to go after a while. The rubber lasts quite a few years and then it perishes. So the guy's names that I've been seeing doing the repairs on the heaters, they're fully licensed and accredited. Sure, of course they are. They're licensed and accredited, yet they install what seems to me to be a basic piece of equipment. It is obviously improperly installed, and it's caused the death of four people, so... You employ accredited mechanics to do this. We call them installers. Uh, technically, they're gas fitters. Installers, then. <laughs> they know what they're doing, detective, if that's what you're trying to imply. Mm. I want you to get me a copy of the list of your installers. Okay, I'll get it for you. Yeah, I want to speak to the two guys that had serviced both of those machines. There, around a dozen of them. The housing business is going What the crazy. hell was his name, damn it? This is a long shot. We are not going to rouse that whole list. I want to run it by R&I, cross-reference for arsonists. See if any of these guys have any previous. Sir, I need to use your phone. Go right ahead. Varley. Varley's name was on that list. Uh, where's your telephone? Operator, give me dispatch. Hmm. Something's going on here, you guys. A little bit fishy. Putting you through now. Starting to stink. <laughs> know what I mean? I don't Fox, like that guy. 1247. How can I help, detective? I need to know if any of the following names have a previous criminal history. Okay, detective. Run the names. Is he actually going to rhyme them all off? Acevedo Ernesto. Oh my god, he actually is. Walter, Elgrim John, Gable Leroy, Kellegro Peter. Cutner Robert, Limehouse Albert, Manning Franklin, Neves Raymond, O'Brien Thomas, Ryan Matthew, Spurgeon William, Varley Reginald, Zurich Stephen. Cole Phelps, you guys. Previous conviction for arson and malicious damage. Ooh. Burned down a house in Westwood in 1942. Four year jail term. Oh, bro. Thanks. 
Ryan Matthew, charged for contempt of court, attempted murder, plea bargain down to assault charge. Anyone else? There is a Reginald Varley wanted for murder by Detroit Police Department. What? Thanks. You've been a big help, young lady. Holy crap. Okay, so we got... Your employment roster is quite the rogues gallery, yeah. Mr. Rasick. Desperate times indeed. Do you have an address for Clemens? He's uh, working on an apartment building on uh, Catalina and 3rd. What about Ryan? Currently working at a housing development on Normandy and 1st Street. Varley, where is he? Beverly and Mariposa, currently working on a new housing development. Hey, Varley's a good guy. You can't harass all my people. These guys have lockers. Yes, they do, but my men have a right to some privacy. Don't you need a warrant or something? Show him and keep quiet. I was about to say, I could close my right hand real hard and cock it all the way the fuck back. <laughs> or I could come back tomorrow with a warrant. Happy now? Stick around, Mr. Rasick. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I don't like this guy, man. And Cole does not either. Walter Clemens. What do we got here? What is that? An anarchist Clemens essay. Clemens is a fellow traveler. Law and Authority, an anarchist's essay, Pierre Kropotkin, uh, five cents, printed by Los Angeles Anarchist Society. Chapter one. When ignorance reigns in society and disorder in the minds of men, laws are mul multa... I can't really read part of that, it's kind of too fuzzy to be fair. What is this? Some kind of little anarchist notebook. I don't know what that is. Oh, wow. It's a whole ton of them. Are they all the same? Some light reading on the merciless capitalist machine. Yeah, this is some weird shit to have, man. Brian wants the world to be a better place. Don't we all? This is some weird shit to have in your locker, my man. Flyers. Ah, that's nothing. They're mechanics, man. They got tools in their locker. Reginald Barley, guys. <gasps> Mosquito coils! No way. Thousands of these in a war. Still got eaten alive. <laughs> yeah, they really don't do anything, man. Barley has a problem with bugs. Mosquito coils, you guys. So Varley has mosquito coils. You know that a mosquito coil takes an hour to burn down, Rasik? No, I didn't know that. It's the favorite choice of ignition by arsonists. Gives them time to get away. You're crazy. He probably lives near the canals in Venice. Mind if I leave you to it? I got work waiting. Yeah, we might be back to see you. Just to let you know. Three birds. Lemons, Ryan, Varley. Where to, Phelps? Man, which one should we go after? One of them has a previous charge for arson. He is kind of lighting up my beacon pretty good. But the other guy has assault charges and stuff like that. But then our third guy has friggin' mosquito coils in his locker, man. <laughs> Who is it? Oh no, this is one of them. One of the three, he's doing it again. He just reversed the valve thing. Oh no, you guys. He's doing it again. He's setting up another house to blow right now. Shit, man, we gotta pick one of the three. Bro, Clemens, Varley, Ryan. Ryan. Insta heat gas fitter. Hold on. Reginald Varley has a warrant out for murder from Detroit. So he is wanted by other law enforcement. Yes, 
Shit, you guys, which one should we go after? We gotta catch him. <laughs> Come on. Cle Clemens is our guy with previous arson uh, convictions. Wait a minute, is he? Do we have this in our clues? Please. Yes, criminal records. Clemens is criminal record. Clemens shows prior conviction for arson. Carrying a four-year jail sentence. Ryan. Ryan shows pre previous conviction for contempt and assault. So he got into a fight with somebody. Varley's criminal record. He's actually wanted by Detroit police for murder. Clemens is the one that had the anarchist pamphlets. And he's our arsonist as well. Shit. But Ryan also had the anarchist pamphlets. But the mosquito coils were found in Varley's locker. Ryan had the boxes of the pamphlets. So it seems to me that Ryan is the guy running the little anarchy thing. And he's getting Clemens interested in it. Who has previous convictions for arson. Oh man, this is a case and a half, you guys. What the shit. Uh, we should go after Clemens. He's got previous for arson. He served four years for it. Clemens is my man right now. He's lighting up my beacon, you guys. All right, but we are at uh, 32 minutes, so I am going to have to cut to this episode right here, man. Thank you guys for coming out and watching this episode of L.A. Noir. Do me a favor, you guys. Leave a like on the video. Maybe subscribe to the channel. Other than that, I freaking love you, and I wish you the total best. Hope you guys have a freaking awesome rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. So you best be sure to have a good one. Bye-bye, <laughs> you guys. I'll just get a quick pause here. Bye-bye, you guys.